I've paid thousands of dollars in courses to learn what you're basically teaching on your podcast for free. What you're putting out there is so valuable. So, you know, I just really want to acknowledge you and I definitely send everyone to your podcast. You were virtually one of the first mentors that I looked up to and started following. You're always one step ahead of the game, so I just wanted to give you kudos and props for that because lots of people are watching, lots of people are learning from it. Tucker and the whole TTM crew, Dan and Chris, thanks so much for your support. I love what you guys do and a huge, huge fan. Having this support's huge, so I'm grateful for that. What's up, everybody out there in listener land? This is episode 275 of the Real Deals Podcast. And as always, I'm your host, Tucker Merrihew. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I've got another great episode for you. But before I get into that, I hopefully you guys listened to last week's repeat show. It was a repeat for a reason because it was uh, it's sort of an oldie, but it's a goodie. And uh, like I said in last week's show, it was our highest downloaded interview show that we've ever done. And so hopefully you guys got some gold out of that. It was all about cold calling. And that ties in really well to this week's show, uh, which is actually a training that I did uh, for all of our Driving for Dollar app users. And so uh, I put together this training for everybody that has downloaded that app to kind of let them better understand uh, not only the data that the app skip traces and pulls for you, but then how to use that data to actually market for uh, more deals, essentially. So, you know, the strategies that we talk about, the layering uh, of marketing that we talk about in this training, it can be used, uh, whether it's a drive for dollars list or whether it's a filtered list or whether it's a specialty list, uh, you can use all of the same strategies on all these different lists. It just so happens that uh, in this particular training, I'm talking specifically about driving for dollars lists since, of course, that's what our app does is it allows you to create those very simply. But like I said, you can take this information and you can apply it universally to all the lists that you market to. So that's why I wanted to kind of take the audio out of this training. It was a video that I did uh, or that I shot for uh, all our d4d app users uh, but i want to take the audio out of it and i wanted to put it out there for all of you guys to hear so that uh, hopefully those of you that listen to the podcast uh, can get a lot of value out of it as well i know sometimes it's hard to sit through uh, a video that was the length of this one so if i put it in audio form hopefully more of you guys are able to listen to it and uh, put it to you so that's going to be this week's show before i get into that of course uh, i always want to talk about what uh, is going on in terms of housekeeping items the first thing that I want to mention is we're making a big push uh, to add more of you guys that are listeners to our Deal Finders Academy. So if you have thought about maybe joining, you've been on the fence, um, I strongly encourage you to reach out to us. You know, it's a fantastic group to be a part of uh, for a number of reasons. But the biggest one, in my opinion right now, is that it's a great way to be a part of a group uh, where you don't have to travel, right? Um, the in-person masterminds are awesome. You get to meet people. Uh, you kind of develop those personal one-on-one uh, relationships when you actually see people in the flesh, right? Um, but if you're like me and you got two kids and you got a lot going on, travel is very difficult. And it also gets very costly at the end of the day. And so by being a part of Deal Finders Academy or the DFA, you don't have to travel every quarter, right? Uh, you can actually interact with people on a daily basis within our private Facebook group. And um, you know our website has tons of resources that have been accumulated over the last five years as well. But you get day-to-day interactions without all of the commitment and travel uh, that's required with the face-to-face masterminds. And that's not to rag on them by any means. Uh, it's just a another way to kind of get help get direction um get uh, you know q a advice whatever it is that you need uh from kind of a collective group of very successful people uh on demand so if you're interested in joining myself jay scott my man nasser who just uh joined uh rj bates uncle carl anson young and of course mr david martinez from last week's show and a whole slew of other really awesome people uh, reach out to us and uh, we'd love to see if we've got room in your market so that you can join us Now, beyond that, uh, our Driving for Dollars app, the one thing I wanted to mention, of course, this uh, training is kind of all about how to better use that. But this week, we actually rolled out a new tier for those of you guys that are either have like Uber and Lyft drivers or kind of an ant farm of people that are bringing you leads on a daily basis that you can then kind of plug into your system and start marketing to them. We 
opened up a new tier that's basically unlimited list building. So it essentially allows you to just build lists of property addresses um, that would be a good fit for us as an investor to purchase. And so you can have people under your account that are basically creating lists and adding these leads uh, on a daily basis all over the place, whether Uber drivers or whether they're people that you actually hire to drive um, or people that are on your team or whatever they are, but they can constantly be adding to um, you know your account in terms of these properties so that then you can plug them into your marketing machine. So it's uh, like 20 bucks a month and it's unlimited list building and you can have everybody on your team use it. So it's a fantastic tool. So for those of you guys that run a bigger operation and you want to create these bigger lists and you've got people driving for you all over, uh, this is a great way to do that. So that tier gets rolled out. It should be done. By the time you guys are listening to this, it should be fully implemented uh, both in iTunes and in Android. It takes a little while for them to uh, roll that stuff out and make sure that uh, it's available to everybody. But like I said, by the time you guys are listening to this, uh, it should be. So that's it as far as housekeeping stuff uh, in terms of what's going on with me and TTM this week. Well, we've had a busy week, uh, as we always do, of course. But tomorrow, I'm actually going to sit down uh, with our title company, and I'm going to their data office. And so... You know, title companies are a great resource for a lot of things. If you have a good title company, you can do all kinds of things. They make closing, you know, wholesale deals easy, subject to deals easy. If you don't have a good title company, those two things can be very difficult. But one thing title companies can also do is provide you a ton of data and lists. And so what I'm doing tomorrow is I'm actually going to uh, the location that does all of the data pulling for our local title company here. And I'm gonna sit down with them and I'm gonna really hash through everything that they could potentially pull for us uh, in terms of specialty lists, deed types, all kinds of stuff, right? And uh, I'm gonna see what I can come up with. So I'm gonna kinda use the uh, the genius that's there, which is people that are basically pulling data every day for the title company. I'm gonna kinda layer mine on top and we're gonna see what kind of cool new lists that we can pull um, based on all the stuff that they've got the ability uh, to pull data-wise. And so I will probably report back to you guys on what it is that uh, we're able to put together. But uh, I'm pretty excited to kind of put my brain to work with theirs and uh, see if we can come up with some new cool lists because, uh, you know, everybody mails the same list for the most part, with the exception of driving for dollars because it's a custom list that you create. But for the most part, everybody's mailing the same list. And so if we can find a sliver of the market that maybe isn't as marketed to um, via some type of custom list, then uh, we've got a small competitive advantage over our com- competitors and uh, that's all we need. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted on that. In terms of other stuff that we've got going on, uh, we're looking at a lot of redevelopment opportunities this week. And so as you kind of climb the real estate ladder, you know, the, the first stop is usually wholesaling. The next stop is usually rehabbing. The next stop is, you know, maybe multifamily or new construction. And then as you get into new construction, you start to look at redevelopment opportunities as well. And so a lot of redevelopment, um, infill redevelopment is tied to new construction, especially here in the Portland area. And so we're looking at this morning, I was out looking at three potential lots. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be looking at potentially four lots, um, all infill stuff that you'd have to partition and kind of, uh, you know, it's within an already developed area. Both of these happen to be in Lake Oswego, so really within a, a developed area and a high, you know, um, very high demand type area as well with high price points. So we've got a lot of opportunities like this. You know, that's probably the most fun part of this business for me um, is looking at these raw pieces of land or land that have like, you know, obscure, weird little houses on them, or maybe they have a, you know, a decent house on them, but it's a big piece of land that's attached to it. And then figuring out how do you maximize that land to not only maximize density, but also maximize marketability. And sometimes those two things don't go side by side. You have to kind of limit density a little bit in order to get the most marketability you can and you have to kind of balance okay is it worth building another house uh, or are you, is it worth building one less and trying to sell for more I kind of have fun with that so that's the part of the business that I enjoy so like I said I was out um, you know on a piece of property today that was a little over an acre that uh, it was completely overgrown and then I'm gonna look at another one tomorrow and combine there's about seven lots there so pretty exciting stuff um, as far as the projects we have going though Um, For those of you guys that follow me on Facebook, I've been posting a lot of updates uh, in the Facebook stories. I'm new to Facebook stories, but uh, I'm I'm figuring that whole game out. And uh, I'm posting a lot of pictures on our Dunthorpe project, which is uh, about two months away from completion, month and a half, something like that. So we're really starting to make some progress there. A lot of the finishes are going in. And so you'll see me post a lot more of those uh, pictures in my Facebook stories. So if you're not friends with me on Facebook, um, you know, make sure that uh, you send me a friend request. I think I've got about 50 or 40 slots left 
So hit me up and uh, obviously if you don't look like a creeper, I'll uh, approve you and uh, you can see what it is that I'm posting and you can kind of keep tabs on our uh, three, three and a half million dollar spec home uh, that we're about to put on the market. Now we've got uh, one other project that's really cool that uh, we've made some progress on. It's a renovation project in West Lynn. We're doing kind of a modern farmhouse uh, remodel on this. So the exterior will be white. It'll have black windows. Um, you know, that look sells really well. It sells really well in new construction, but it sells even better uh, with rehab product because there isn't a whole lot of rehabbed uh, modern farmhouse looking stuff out there on the market. And so those people that can't quite afford the new construction price tag can buy that look on the rehab price tag. And so this property should sell pretty quick. Should sell really quick, actually. It's on a great street, great part of uh, West Lynn, and uh, I'm pretty excited. We had the windows in today. Uh, we're back to putting the house together where we were tearing it apart previously. So we're putting some new siding up, we're putting the new windows in, and uh, we should have that done here in about a month, I think is what we're shooting for. And then, of course, we have another project that uh, we're just about to kick off. We've been working on plans for the last month, and <laughs> we've been stalled out a little bit. But uh, it's basically a house in Lake Oswego that uh, is in a neighborhood that we built a lot of houses in. And we could have tore it down and built a new house, but what I decided to do was, instead of competing against all the other new construction that's going on in there, we decided to rework the floor plan that's there, and we're going to create kind of um, a downsizer type house. Uh, and when I say downsizer, it's about 2,000 square feet. So it's going to be turnkey, really well-designed housing for um, somebody or a couple that's retiring, right? They want to downsize from that 4,000 square foot house to a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage house on a 6,000 square foot lot. Uh, that's about 2,000 square feet and uh, it's walkable to everything. It's in an area that's got, you know, a million two to a million five is what new construction sells for. And then they can buy in for under a million and uh, the house is just dialed. So we're doing this because I want to create kind of this in-between housing stock, which doesn't really exist in this neighborhood. And that kind of goes back to the first thing that I mentioned here is just trying to figure out like what does the market need the most, right? And as you get better at this business, you start to recognize those trends and see those opportunities. And in this neighborhood right now, I feel like that's what this market needs the most. It needs that tweener housing, that downsizer housing, but also that's very turnkey as dialed in in terms of design, floor plan, everything else. So we're about to kick off that project and uh, we got a bunch of other stuff going on too. But anyway, I gave you the Cliff Notes version. I've got a really cool training here. Make sure that you guys listen to it all the way to the end. Um, you know, like I said earlier in the intro, you can take these strategies that I'm talking about with the data and how to use them and how to layer the marketing with them. And you can use that with any list. It doesn't have to necessarily be a driving for dollars list. It could be any list, whether it be filtered or specialty list. You just have to skip trace the information or the homeowners. And then once you skip trace them, you can put all of that information that I talk about in this training to work. So hopefully you guys enjoy it and I will see you on the other side. All right, Real Deals Podcast listeners, I want to talk quickly about our show's sponsor, Iron Bridge Lending. If you guys have not reached out to Iron Bridge already to talk to them about funding some of your upcoming flip projects, I highly encourage you to do so. I've known the owner of Iron Bridge for a very long time. I've personally borrowed millions of dollars from them over the years to do a number of different projects, and I can say without a doubt, they are the best hard money lending company I have ever come across, and that is the reason why they are the sole sponsor of this show. I've had a lot of other companies reach out to me and want to sponsor this show, but I just won't do it. I feel like I need to be genuine in who we have sponsoring the show, and it needs to be somebody that I've personally done a ton of business with. So I personally vouch for their ability to be the best, hands down, in the world of hard money lending. You won't find better programs, you won't find better terms, and they're lending or will be lending in over 20 states. So chances are, if you're hearing this in whatever state you're in, it's definitely worth it to check out their website, reach out to them, see if they're lending in your state, and if they are, I would absolutely encourage you to do business with them. Them. Another very cool thing to note is that they have a program for most rehabs where you can actually borrow up to 90% of the purchase price. Now, this is given the fact that you are actually buying a deal, which if you're listening to the show, that means you probably are. But if you have an actual deal on the table, they'll fund up to 90% of your purchase price and they'll even give you rehab funds on top of that, which means that it only takes 10% down to get into a project, which is unbelievable in the hard money world. So, do yourself a favor, reach out to Iron Bridge Lending, have a conversation with them, see if they're a good fit for you and for your next project. I can guarantee you that you'll be happy that you did. For those of you guys that don't know much about our Driving for Dollars app, maybe you've downloaded it, maybe you've used it, maybe you haven't. If you haven't used it, I suggest you do. But let me explain to you what it is first. It's an app that you download, it's called the Driving for Dollars app. 
We've trademarked the phrase, so it's the only one called Driving for Dollars within the iTunes Store and the Google Play Store. And when you download it, you get a five property free trial. And after that free trial, you can then pick which tier you want to have. And when you do that, it basically lets you pull a certain amount of data each month under that tier. And so you can just kind of pick the tier that works best for you, depending on how many properties you want to add in any given month or depending on how much list building you're doing in any given month. Now, that's the first part of this whole thing, right? You have to build the lists in order to then be able to market to the lists. So you've got to figure out what your farm areas are. Then you've got to go out into those farm areas and you have to build the list, whether it's you or people on your team, uh, but you can pick the tier that's most appropriate based on how many properties you think that you're going to pull or put on a list in any given month. Now for us internally here, we have about 27,000 properties in total on our driving for dollars list, but we've done that over years and years and years. It's taken a very long time to get there. In any given month, we probably don't add more than maybe 300 in a month. We would probably be on the $99 a month plan in order to get us up to 500 skip trace properties in any given month. And that would be more uh, than sufficient for what it is that we would need to do in any given month. So that's just how we work internally. But like I said, our overall list is much larger because we do it every week, week in and week out and every month, month in and month out. So that's kind of how the app works. Now, what does the app give you? Let's go through that first, because once I talk about all the data that the app gives you, then we can talk about how to use the data in order to be a better marketer, because at the end of the day, that is what separates kind of the men from the boys in this business, right? The good from the great. Uh, the good find uh, okay deals, the great find amazing deals. And so to find amazing deals, you have to go places that are not as visible to everybody, right? If you go to the auction, if you go to RMLS, um, those types of places are seen by everybody, which means maybe you get a good deal at best. If you go places that not everybody sees it, that's where you can find the great deals. And to find the great deals, you have to go off market. And to go off market, you need to be able to market directly to homeowners. And that's what our app allows you to do with the data that it provides. So let's talk about what you get. Now, of the tiers that I talked about, every time you get a property that delivers you this information, it counts towards the number of skip traces that you get in any given tier. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, the information you get, number one is owner name, first and last, right? Could be multiple owners, but knowing who owns the property is obviously important for a variety of reasons. You get the mailing address as well as the physical address. Sometimes that's the same property. If it's an owner-occupied property, you're mailing to the property that you see. If it's an absentee-owned property or an investment property, then you're going to be mailing to another address, and that's where skip tracing is often better than public records because sometimes public records doesn't have uh, the most up-to-date address that somebody may be living at. So that having a skip trace version of the data helps you connect with people where otherwise you might just get return mail or you might send it to the subject property when they're not actually there and it may not get forwarded to them. The next thing you get is phone number. You get mobile and landline. Obviously the difference is one's a cell phone, one's a landline, but it's important to know the difference because you can then do different types of marketing to it down the line. For example, ringless voicemails, you can't send those to landlines, but you can cold call landlines, right? So knowing the difference between the two when you get the data is important and our app allows you to decipher the difference. It puts a, a mobile uh, indicator or a landline indicator on the numbers. That way you know how to load those numbers into your marketing, whatever that may be. If you're gonna be doing ringless voicemail, text blast, or whether or not you need to use those numbers to do cold calling uh, or something like that. And we'll get into that here more in just a second. Uh, the next thing you get is email address, right? Email address is a great thing for a variety of different reasons. And once you get that email address, you can do a bunch of different things with it. And uh, I'll go into the different types of layering strategies that you can utilize with email address here in just a couple of minutes. The next piece of information that you get is the IP address, right? An IP address is essentially your internet address, right? So imagine your house. Your house has an address. It's a street address. Well, your ability to tie into the internet also has an address, and that's called an IP address. And with an IP address, you can do all kinds of marketing to people with that IP address. You can market directly into their phones. You can market to their computers, whatever it is that they're accessing the internet from. And so having that is a great piece of information. You also get an alternative mailing address if need be. If it's not the actual property that the person is living in, you get the last sale date for the subject property. So you know when it last sold, which if something sold a year ago, 
it may not be worth spending as much effort marketing in order to get that seller to have a conversation with you versus a property that sold 10 years ago or 20 years ago. If it sold that long ago, then there's a much higher chance that there's equity that's accrued, also that the seller may be willing to sell and that there's some deferred maintenance that may have happened, right? Somebody just bought it a year ago, the chances of it being a deal for you Eh, probably not great, especially if they paid close to retail at that point in time. The other thing that it'll tell you is the last sale price. So you can get an indicator and that ties into what I just said previously. If it sold a year ago and you know what it sold for and you need to buy it at hundred grand less than that, the chances of you getting a deal out of that particular homeowner, probably not very good. Uh, it's just not a high likelihood. But if it sold 10 years ago and it sold for a very low amount compared to what it would be worth today, that would be a potentially very good lead if you could get them to contact you or you could contact them and have a conversation, right? The other thing it gives you is age of owner, right? A lot of people pull bulk lists based on the age of the property owner. Well, with our app, it gives you the age of the owner so that you can determine within the data that it gives you, okay, this person is 45 or this person's 65 or this person's 85 or 90, right? As they start to get up in age, you can then rank that lead as well. Is that lead worth spending more time money or effort or a combination of those things in order to get them to have a conversation with you. And so we do that all the time. And so that's why we included age as some of the data that you get from the app. It also gives you a deceased indicator, right? If you pull uh, the information on who owns the property and you see that they're 85 years old, but it also shows that they're deceased, right? Well, that means that they may have recently died. And if they recently died, as morbid as it is, there's some estate things that need to take place, right? A probate needs to be filed, or if the property is in the name of the trust, um, or it's owned by the trust, then it needs to be liquidated in order for those assets to then be distributed to the next of kin, or the heirs, right? Uh, or the beneficiaries of that uh, estate. So knowing whether or not somebody is deceased or not, although it's a terrible thing for somebody to die, it's important for you as an investor to know because if they're still entitled to the property, then that means that property needs to be dealt with and likely needs to be sold at a future date, we'll say, right? And then last but not least, it gives you a bankruptcy indicator. And this on its own is not a huge indicator, but you can kind of layer it in with everything. It basically says, hey, has this property owner had financial issues in the past? And if they have, then there may be some opportunity for you to solve some issues now in the future. Because a lot of times when people file bankruptcy once, they may need to do it again and again because it's just how they live their life. So it's an indicator of potential motivation for the owner of the property. One other thing that uh, people often ask about the app is, well, what if I have an old list, right? That isn't in the app as of yet. Maybe I did a driving for dollars list previously, or maybe I did uh, some manual driving for dollars list that I've uploaded into Excel, or somehow I have those lists, or it's just another list, um, you know, another specialty list or another bulk list of some sort, right? Can I run that list through the app in order to get the skip traces done? And the answer to that is no. And so what we do is we'll actually skip trace those lists for you on the side so you can reach out to us directly. You can send us a message via the Facebook page. You can send us an email. We'll put all that information in the uh, links below. Uh, and we can actually do skip tracing for you outside of the app on all of these old lists that you've created, whether they're driving for dollars lists or other specialty lists or other filtered lists that you've created. And so if you have those lists, we can definitely skip trace them for you with the same skip tracing uh, data that we pull through the app. As far as pricing goes, it's as competitive as you're going to find anywhere. And as far as the quality of the data goes, it's as uh, good as you're going to find anywhere. And it's the same data, of course, that we utilize in the app. You can reach out to us and get exact pricing on all that, depending on the size of your list. But I can assure you that it's as competitive as you're going to find, we make sure that we stay competitive so that way we take care of you as a Driving for Dollars app customer. Now, let's talk about how to use the data that we provide you in the app. This is the most important part, right? We provide you all this data. I told you what the data is. Now, how do we use it in order to find better deals and to ultimately be a better marketer, right? That's why I'm doing this video. That's hopefully what you get out of all of this, right? You can read the description on the app and it tells you everything that it gives you. But what you can't do is take that and figure out how to be a better marketer with it. And so that's what I want to teach you here. So the first thing that we do with the data that we get from our Driving for Dollars app is we send direct mail. Now, direct mail is the foundation of all of our marketing. Now, some people say that direct mail is dead, it doesn't work well, yada, yada, yada. The truth is, is that it doesn't work as well as it used to. There's absolutely no question to that. But it still works phenomenally well if you do it correctly. And 
when I say do it correctly, I mean a couple of things. Number one is you don't go pull a ginormous list and send out a ton of mail all at once, right? It's not the right way to do it because there's a lot of skills that you need to acquire and build along the way in order to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck or the most deals from the leads, uh, whether that's talking to sellers, whether that's identifying value, uh, whether that's connecting with sellers, whether that's recognizing motivation and opportunity. All these things are skills that you hone over time as you talk to sellers and as you take leads. But in order to talk to sellers, in order to get leads into our business here, our main driver is direct mail. So it starts with creating a list, right? You use the app to create the list. From that data that the app provides, you get the homeowner's name and you get their mailing address. Now, you wanna send them a direct mail piece. Now, with that direct mail piece, you wanna make sure that it's direct response marketing, right? There's a lot of people that do brand marketing, like Coke, Pepsi, things like that. It's like, hey, we're Coke, we're Pepsi, drink us, right? Well, in this business, you wanna make sure that the marketing that you're doing is direct response marketing. What that means is it directly gets them to respond to the marketing piece that you're sending them. It says, I can do this for you. This is why you should contact me. And you wanna make sure that that piece talks about all the things that you can do for them. You wanna talk about what you can do for them and not how great you are. They don't care how great you are. They just wanna know what you can do for them. And so that's what a direct response marketing piece is. Now, if you marry that together with the direct mail piece, basically what you get is a high quality piece that gets somebody's attention, that gets them to hopefully pick up the phone and give you a call. Or at a minimum, they email you, they send you a Facebook message, whatever it is or whatever medium it is that they like to communicate with you best first so that then you can start a conversation and ultimately build a relationship. So with direct mail, the biggest piece of advice that I'll give you is try and stand out, try and be different. Back in the day, you used to be able to send yellow letters. You could send 300 yellow letters and you could get 50 phone calls. No kidding. That's what it was back in the day. Not anymore though. It's very competitive compared to what it used to be and there's a lot more people doing direct mail. So you have to think about what it is that you're sending, right? Don't just copy what everybody else does because if you do that, you're gonna have to send a ton of direct mail in order to get enough of it to stick and people to pay attention so that they call you and you have leads to work with. So instead of trying to spend more than everybody else, create a very niche list of properties that absolutely should be bought by investors via the app, and then send them very creative mail. If you do that, I guarantee you, you'll get a lot more calls than if you did the opposite, which is basically pull a list and send them your generic yellow postcards or generic yellow letters. You can do it, but you're gonna have to send a lot of them to get the same results. So that's, I guess, marketing secret number one, we'll say. Number two is you have to be consistent. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say direct mail doesn't work, and I say, well, how many times have you mailed that list? And they say once, right? I got two calls, I didn't get a deal. Well, that's pretty much gonna be the standard answer if you take a list, you mail it one time, and you don't follow up with it, right? And you don't continue to mail it, and you don't continue to get in front of these people. Uh, if you do that, you might as well just not mail it, at least right now with where we're at in the market cycle. And so my suggestion number one is be different with your marketing piece, right? Stand out from the crowd, put some thought into it, have it be a direct response piece that's all about them. Number two is you need to be consistent with the mail that you send. So don't go create a list that's so huge that you can only mail to it one time. Basically meaning you've only got the budget to mail to it one time. You don't want to do that. You want to build a list that is big enough that you have a good enough subset of leads in order to market to them, but not so big that you can't market to them on a continual basis. Be consistent, that's the big thing. And make sure that within that consistency, you're mailing a list that you can actually afford to mail over and over again. Now, in terms of the amount of time in between mailings, there's a few schools of thought on that. For us, we will generally, if it's a brand new list, we will mail them in about a two week interval starting off. The reason being is because it gets people's attention to mail that close together initially. Beyond that, we'll mail them probably once a quarter. There's no reason to really mail them more than that, especially with driving for dollars leads, because if you do, you're probably wasting your money because people need to have a change in life or circumstance in order for them to want to sell their property. And so the idea is after you get their attention initially and they learn who you are by the branding and the piece that you send them, you then want to stay relevant to them. And if you stay relevant to them long enough, eventually timing will work out and they will call you when they're thinking about selling. And so you have to have timing line up with driving for dollars leads. And that's why I wouldn't suggest that you mail them more than once a quarter after an initial blast. That way you just stay relevant with them and you're able to do it on a manageable budget. Now, 
The other thing is within the piece that you send them, you want to make sure that there's multiple ways for them to contact you, right? They can call you, but some people don't like to call right away. So they could text you. You might have a, some sort of a prompt at the bottom to say, hey, if you don't want to call, make sure to shoot us a text. Give them an email address, number three. Or number four, they can send you a, a Facebook message, right? Give them multiple ways to contact you. Some people don't like to talk on the phone right away. They're just not comfortable doing that, and that's fine. And so if they're not, just make sure to give them other ways to contact you. You'll be amazed at how many people actually reach out to you if you give them options and ways to do it. To recount that real quick, you got phone, you got email, you got website, of course. You should have a website. If you don't, at least have a Facebook page, a business Facebook page where they can send you a message, but you should definitely have a website as well if you're gonna pay for marketing directly to sellers. They need to see that you're real and you need to have a way for them to uh, fill out a form on that site that gets delivered directly to you. And then of course you need email as well that goes along with that so they can send you an email if they don't want to fill out the form on the site. Um, text message as well and um, you know smoke signal I guess if you want it, right? <laughs> so that's direct mail marketing. You have to make sure that you're consistent, that you send a direct response piece that's a quality piece that stands out from the crowd and you have to give people multiple ways to contact you and ultimately to remember you, right? So that's the first thing. The second piece of information or data that you get from the app that's super important to use in your marketing is phone number. Now phone number is a big thing. And like I said initially, the types of phone numbers we give you is we give you landline and we give you cell number. Now with landlines, it's pretty cut and dry. You're going to need to cold call these people and we do a lot with properties that are A plus properties or properties that we want to redevelop. So we know exactly what we're going after and we want to redevelop them. With mobile numbers, we send them ringless voicemails. Now the way we do ringless voicemails is we utilize the ROAR system. And we'll overlay some footage here so you can see the system that we use, but it's ROAR, R-O-O-R, and it's the most cost-effective way to stay relevant and layer your marketing that there is. You can send them ringless voicemails or you can send them text messages. I suggest you test text messages in your market to see how those resonate with sellers uh, because if it pisses more people off than it doesn't, then maybe it's not a great idea to use them. But if in your market people are kind of willing to start a conversation via text before they talk to you, then use it because it's a great cost-effective way to layer your marketing. Now with us, we use RVMs mainly. We use text secondary. And the way we do our RVMs is that we'll follow up a mail piece with an RVM. That's called layering, right? Mail is most expensive. RVM is very inexpensive. And then potentially a text message after that, right? There's the sequence. There's the layering. And then maybe even an email after that, but we'll get into that here in a second. So that's the layering. That's the process as it goes through the marketing engine, any given lead that we pull through the app, right? Start with mail, hit them with an RVM, maybe hit them with a text message, hit them with an email, and you kind of continue that cycle over and over again. And really, that's the secret sauce, uh, to be honest with you. So if you are not set up with an RVM text provider, uh, I strongly encourage you guys to use Roar. We'll put a link down below. You can click on them. You can go uh, get a, an account set up with them. If you use the promo code REALDEALS, that's deals with a Z, uh, you'll get zero sign-up fees and uh, zero monthly minimum. So we put together a great deal for you guys. We use Roar every single day in our own business. We're literally blasting RVMs right now, and uh, we've been using them for a long time, and we have absolutely no complaints. So go check out the link below, and and uh, make sure that you use the promo code Real Deals, and that's deals with a Z. So, after you get the who owns the property, what the property address is, their phone numbers, potentially a landline and a cell line, depending on how you want to use those or both to market to them, you also get email address. Now, email address, as I mentioned just previously on how to layer, you can send people a cold email. Well, it's somewhat cold email, but you can send them an email after you mail them, you send them an RVM, you potentially text them and you email them, but you can also use those emails to find people's social media profiles. And if you find those, you can reach out to them in different ways as well. But I wanna focus on real quick emails. If you're going to email people, make sure that you have a creative headline and you have a very concise, simple message. If you guys Google the seven word email by an individual named Dean Jackson, it's a great way to start a conversation with a cold email. It gets people. It, it's like a hook and a fish, right? It gets them to respond even if you don't know them. You'll be amazed. So if you're going to use email as a way to contact people, make sure that you use a seven word type email. You can use that email in order to just try and solicit some sort of uh, communication with them, or you can use that email 
you can load it into a social media platform and you can find people's profiles. And if you find their profiles, you can run ads to them, you can send them messages, you can do all kinds of things with that. So that email is very important on many different levels. Now, when you go and you upload those emails into Facebook, let's say, right, you can create a custom audience. And that custom audience, so like, let's say you go to a Driving for Dollars uh, list, right, that you build through the app. You then get email addresses for all the people or most of the people on that list. You then load those email addresses into Facebook. Now you've created a custom audience. You could message a lot of those people if you want to, but if you don't feel bold or you want to just kind of build uh, you know, your brand and get in front of them more before you do that, you can create this custom audience and you can run direct response ads in Facebook, which is almost like a direct mail piece, but in Facebook, to these people, right? And so if you do that around the same time that you're mailing them and you're sending them RVMs and you're potentially sending them emails or text messages, just think of how effective all this can be as it kind of wraps up into one big giant ball of marketing, right? And it's a very cost effective way in order to get people to recognize who you are and ultimately raise their hand and start a conversation. So emails, you can look at them as just an email that you can email people or you could look at them as email that you can email people and then also use that email to find people's social media profiles, create a custom audience, run ads to those people and potentially message them within those social media platforms as well. The last piece of data that you get that you can use for marketing purposes within the app is your IP address. Now, the IP address, it stands for internet protocol, right? like that even really matters but like I said previously it's like your internet address it's where people can find you on the internet just like people can find you where you live in your house so think of an IP address like an address right it's your internet address so how can you use the IP address and why did we include it in the data in the app well if you have somebody's IP address you now can take that and you can run ads to these people, right? You can run ads to them on virtually any site on the internet that accepts ads. You can run banner ads, side ads, all kinds of ads, right? You've been on Yahoo or you've been on random sites where you see ads on the side. Well, you can do that. So instead of just running ads to them in Facebook, you can follow them all the way around the internet and you can run very cost-effective ads to these people by simply having their IP address. And that's why we pull it within the Driving for Dollars app. And it's a kind of an obscure thing and a lot of people don't know how to use it, but it's a great way to layer your marketing and on top of that, stay relevant to people at a really, really cheap cost. I mean, these ads are, I mean, they're pennies. It's pennies to run ads to these people and layer the marketing in order to stay relevant and try and get them to ultimately contact you. They could click on the banner ad or whatever ad that's running and it could take them directly to your website or it could just be reinforced marketing, right? Where they see you here, they hear from you there, they see your direct mail piece, they see your IP ad, they see your Facebook ad, they you know get your email, they get your Facebook message, all these things, right? You do enough of that to enough people, you're gonna get a consistent flow of leads and that's ultimately what you're going for. So that's all the data that you get from the Driving for Dollars app. Those are the different tiers that you can sign up for that I mentioned at the beginning. That's how to kind of tie it all together so that you can create consistent lead flow from just this simple app and the data that it pulls within the exact farm areas that you want to generate deals. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that training and uh, you can take the information that I shared there and you can apply it, whether it be to the list that you're creating via our Driving for Dollars app uh, or whether it be filtered list or specialty list that then you can skip trace and you can take that information that you get from the skip tracing and you can kind of layer your marketing with it. And so that's what we do here. We basically, you know, direct mail is our driver and then we do all kinds of other things surrounding that direct mail in order to get people to reach out to us or we get more aggressive like uh, my man Mr. David Martinez <laughs> talked about in last week's episode uh, we'll actually cold call some of the best ones as well and uh, just try and build a relationship more than anything because you're not going to sell people usually on the first touch whether it be uh, mail whether it be cold call whatever it is but you might be able to start a relationship start a conversation that conversation may ultimately lead to a transaction down the line so Anyway, hopefully you guys got some gold out of that. You can put it to work in your business. But before I leave you, as always, I want to leave you with a closing success quote. And the quote is, take action, exclamation. An inch of movement will bring you closer to your goals than a mile of intention. I like that quote. Hopefully you guys like it too. And I'll see you all on next week's show. Oh, I forgot. I told you that uh, I was going to have my better half on this week. We ran out of time. But next week she'll be here to talk all about project management, budgeting, design and uh, construction management as well so all those good things are on next week's show so i'll see you all next week